everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you the piece I made for the Four Artists Four Seasons video hop for fall or autumn. Usually I start out these videos showing you how I made my background. The idea is that we each make a mixed media background, we scan it with our scanners, and then share it with each other. And then all of us print out all the different backgrounds and we make something out of them. Of course, mine's gonna usually be collage, right? Because that's what I like. Um, other people might make something else. Um, I don't know, seems like a lot of people were doing collage in this collaboration this year, but um, last year I did the same type of a, of a seasonal collaboration where we actually sent each other postcard size backgrounds and then we all made small things like cards and postcards. So these are um, printed out on uh, eight and a half by 11 paper on a laser printer. So they are nice. <laughs> They're really nice. And at the very beginning, I showed you that the printout of mine, which is the one on the top with the black leaves and the brown and blue colors, the printout and my actual piece were very similar. So I think this is a good way to exchange um, you know, your backgrounds and your art with other people and do collaborations like this just by using the the digital way of doing it or whatever, technique, I don't know. Anyway, this is working out really well. Don't have to mail anything except for just, you know, on Facebook we share them. So it's been a lot of fun. We'll have one more of these uh, the winter and they're near the um, equinoxes for each season. So autumn or fall starts on the 23rd and this is coming out on the 20th so it's just a few days before the fall equinox. All the digital backgrounds were inspired by fall colors. I have one from Bea Grobe, I have one from Peg Robinson, I have one from Gina Ahrens and then there's mine. So I'm going to use them to make a um, kind of a fall sprite or goddess or something, I don't know, um, a face. I have been, always been interested in collaging faces. It's a little tricky. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do, but what I did was I took my big paper pad, which is the Arteza um, acrylic paper pad, and I taped off the edges so that I would have a nice border around the edge. And then I made a quick pencil drawing um, I wanted a headdress on my girl or whatever she is that has a pumpkin and leaves. To me, the things that are really iconic about fall is pumpkins and leaves. There's other things, you know, there's the wheat and there's the corn stalks and there's all kinds of interesting things, scarecrows. I mean, there, I could have went a lot of ways, but this is what I came up with and started and then had to had to finish later. <laughs> so I am not uh, I'm not doing this in an easy way. I'm I don't know how to say this. Okay. To really do a paper painting and to do it well, I would need to make my drawing. I would need to make an underpainting so that I would have all my places to put everything and then I could fill it in with my collage. That's a true paper painting. This is more like paper piecing. And I'm not even using a pattern of any sorts. A lot of times I will use deli paper and I will draw over my pieces and then use the deli paper as kind of like pattern pieces. I'm not even doing that. I'm literally winging it. I'm cutting out pieces and slapping them on there. Um, this is fun to me. This is is fun, but it takes a little bit longer to do it this way because, um, you know, there's no background. So now I'm going to have to go back in and fill in the background. I could do that with paint. This could be a true mixed media piece if I filled it in with watercolors or I filled it in with, a, with India ink or I filled it in with acrylic paint or I filled it in with you know, some type of a crayon or something, that's a possibility, but I didn't do that. I, I collaged the entire thing. So then by doing that, I'm having to piece and part things together, which 
isn't the easiest way to do this. And it's not, maybe not what I would recommend. It's just, it's just something that, um, it occupies my brain. I have always been interested in and kind of fascinated by shapes and how things fit together. I've always liked to put together puzzles. And so that's kind of what this is, is putting together a puzzle. So the only part that I did use deli paper on to cut out the shape was the face and the, the shoulder. I wanted to make sure that I got that line kind of um, at the one third area I wanted, you know, for composition, I wanted there to be one third, two thirds. So it's a three quarter portrait and I've got it about one third in at the, the edge of the face. That's a, an important shape right there. So I did use the, um, the deli paper. And while I was doing that, I also kind of quick sketched where I had put the features so that I could use that shape and that um, uh, I could cut that apart and use it to place my different pieces so that they're not so weird. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but as far as the pumpkin, the, the leaves, all of that stuff was just cut by freehand and just placed um, in different areas. So as I'm doing this, you can see that the sun is creeping across my desk and I'm going to have to stop. So I'm going to have to come back later. And it was like three days later before I got back to this. Um, and I started the camera and then it turned off for some reason. So, so I cut the, um, the little eye pieces and the nose shape and the lip shape using that same deli paper piece that I had made earlier. Uh, they're, they're not perfect, but I use that to help me place things, to get things in the right places and to get the shapes pretty well right. Um, so the way that I created the background, my, my background, I wish that I had had the footage and you may wonder why I don't. And it's because my laptop died <laughs> and it was being stored on my laptop. Because I, I make this background way in advance and then we share them and so that we will all have them to make our final pieces, you know, when we want to. So we put them in our Facebook group and then they then we can all print them when we want. And so the time that I made the background was very different from the time that I made the finished piece. So that, that digital file was stored on my other laptop that died. And that's the reason I don't have the footage. Um, had to replace it with a different laptop. And I tried to go and see if I could get it off it, but I couldn't. So um, if you're wondering about those weird leaf shapes that was on my background, those were... Uh, I made, I made like little stencils out of hot glue. And that's what a lot of that, that video footage was about was how you can make your own stencils out of hot glue. So since I don't have that anymore, perhaps I'll have to do it again at a, some other point. And uh, then I used those on the, the gel plate to make my original background. Um, and then no, I didn't actually. I made a collage background with different pieces and then I used those those little weird stencils to print on top of it with acrylic paint. That's what I did. I'm trying to remember. It was a while ago. <laughs> so I'm now cutting little tiny pieces. I'm trying to add in some shadows and highlights. And all the paper on this, 100% of it is from the digital backgrounds. I didn't use any other papers that I have. Um, I just looked in different sections of everyone's background and I cut pieces where I wanted, like, you know, there's some yellow on Gina's and there's some nice, interesting pattern on Bea's that kind of looks like um, a leaf vining down the leaf. So I cut those areas and made the leaves because it gave me that that pattern. I think she used probably a comb or something. She probably has it in her video. Of course, all the videos will be linked below this one and you can go and watch um, Bea's, Peg's, and Gina's videos having to do with this collaboration as well. 
in some cases I laid a piece down and then I then I kind of made a mark with a pencil so that I could cut the right shape because now I'm having to fill in the background. Wouldn't it have been smarter just to glue a back background down first and then collage over the top of it? Yeah, that would have been smart. <laughs> I did it kind of backwards, but it still worked. Still worked, people. This red one with the actual leaf prints on it is Peg's, and she um, she's making a nature journal, and she went out and got leaves out of her garden, and I believe she gel printed them. And then that's kind of like a, it's a blown up version of it. They're larger than the actual leaves, I think. She probably made a smaller piece in the, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. When when you have a digit, something digital, you can make it whatever size you want. So you can crop it, you can shrink it down, you can make it bigger, you can do whatever you want because it's, it's a di digital, it's not an actual physical piece. So this paper and this way of doing it with exchanging the digital backgrounds really does lend itself well to collage because I'm printing them out on a text weight paper. So yeah, this is fun. Um, there's two other videos on my channel and I will link them in the iCard or at the end in the end screen that you can watch uh, the spring and the summer. Uh, both fun if you haven't seen them already. And then, of course, I really recommend that you go and watch everyone else's videos. They'll, they'll be good, I promise. They'll be really good because this group is highly talented. <laughs> so, yeah. This took a while. This Most of this video is sped up eight times fast. Imagine if I'd had to put the... Uh, the video of me making the background onto it as well I would have had to probably cut some out so I guess maybe it's a blessing that I lost all that video footage in the great laptop crash of 2019 <laughs> it's bound to happen it, technology is not predictable and it's definitely not permanent and so things happen a lot more than you would expect so one thing as I'm no that I am noticing as I am doing my collage is that the paper tones, not necessarily the colors, although some of the colors are similar, the tone, um, how light it is, how dark it is, is all very similar on all four of our pieces. Uh, the lightest one is Gina's with the green and the yellow, and she has a lot of white space in hers. But then mine's quite dark, and... Bayes is, is quite dark because it has a lot going on on it. And then um, Peg's is, is that dark red color mostly with a little bit of pink. And so as I'm using these pieces, I know that my piece as a whole, the composition as a whole, is all very tonal. So I know that I'm going to need to do something to lighten and darken. I'm going to need to add highlights. I'm going to need to add shadow. I'm going to need to do something. And so as I'm doing it, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it. Um, do I want it to look more illustrative? Do I want it to look more painterly? Should I, uh, should I glaze it? What should I do? And what I finally decided was that I would put in some very dark shadows I tend to like an illustrative look. I like lines around things. It's a personal style choice uh, that I enjoy. And so not all people are into that, you know? Some people don't like it that way. They're like, why do you keep putting lines around everything? Stop doing that. I just like it. But I do make soft lines by using this highly water reactive pencil called a Stabilo All pencil. And this was the black. And I can blend out the line and blend it into the background using water. So I have a water tank brush and I'm um, blending those edges out so that they're not 
you know, a harsh marker line as if I had taken maybe a Posca pen and just drew lines around things or, you know, one of my illustration pens. It's not, it's not that type of a line. It's more of a shadow, but it's still definitely a line because I like lines. <laughs> I like to corral in things. I like to make them in spaces. And that's it's just a style choice. It's just the way I am. So I'm taking the Stabilo All Black Pencil. I'm going around all the shapes. And just by doing that alone, I am bringing out the figure and making everything look more separated because it really is way, way, way too tonal. It's all the same. There's not a lot of lights or darks in there because of the papers that I use. That's just the papers. I needed to use the papers and those are the papers. So that's how it's going to be. So this isn't 100% collage. This is mixed media because I'm adding other media to my project, my collage project, to make it the way I want it to be, the, the, how I want it to look. So everything, every single shape is outlined with the Black Stabilo All Pencil. And then there's still more to do more to do something that I like about the pumpkin shape is though how it has it's not just not just a round blob or an oval blob it's got it's got texture things go in things come out and so I enjoyed putting those pieces different pieces of paper to make it look more uh, like a pumpkin I think if I just made a round thing that was orange it wouldn't look like a pumpkin because they have such an, an interesting shape. I haven't bought a pumpkin yet. They are in the stores, but um, I, I, if I do get one for like as a decoration, I get it at the very last minute because they, they uh, rot really fast here because it's hot. You know, you're thinking about Halloween and witches and, and uh, you know, all that fun stuff, skeletons. And then think about the desert and how hot it is in, in those costumes. It's just very different from, you know, what I what I had as a child. So now I've got some glazing liquid, and that is a clear polymer with no pigment in it. And then I'm using some uh, unbleached titanium, unbleached titanium, which is an off-white buff type of a color. And I'm mixing that in with the glazing medium and then I'm using that in certain areas to lighten up parts of the composition without changing the pattern or the color very much. Just making it lighter but everything still shows through. That's a great thing about glazing is that you aren't covering anything. Like if I just used this straight unbleached titanium paint I would have covered up all the interesting pattern that's in these different papers you know there's some text and there's lines and there's uh, scraped shapes and leaf shapes and they would be gone and it would be so boring if, if I did that I also wanted to warm up some areas so I'm using some cadmium light acrylic paint mixed with that same glazing medium and just glazing over a few areas to make her skin tone warmer to make the pumpkin look look more orange and um, that makes a big difference too it just warms everything up to bring in a warm color like that and warm colors are what fall is all about right so I added just a few highlights uh, in the eyes with the Posca pen and then I continued to glaze and that's how I finished everything I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells. And of course you can share this on Pinterest or uh, Facebook. And if this is your last video for the day, please remember to go and click on somebody who has a million, a million subscribers and a million views so that uh, you know, you're not leaving, leaving uh, YouTube off of my video. Also, do not forget to go and watch the other videos and see what they made with these same digital backgrounds. That's always interesting to see what people make given the same thing, how different everyone's projects end up. And of course, give those people some love and, you know, 
thumbs ups and comments and all those same things. So that is it for me for the fall for artists for seasons collaboration hop. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <music>